Greetings, my fellow cane crafters, and thank you for joining me here on my platypus knitting channel. My name is Bobby Olan, and whoopsies, that nearly fell off. <laughs> Good start to the video. Uh, what was I saying? My name is Bobby Olan, and I am a knitter and fiber crafts explorer in Victoria, Australia. So I should tell you first what is in this going to be in this video. I am going to give you a bit of a history on my very, very short history of spinning and uh, explain why I chose the wheel that I did and then we are going to play some wheel games to get to know her and then I will do a tiny bit of spinning on it as well. This is my Turkish spindle here who I call Aldiab after a horse in the Wheel of Time series. So this is my first spinning tool and it is a great little uh, Turkish spindle. I did find it is on the small side which was great for beginning but it's a struggle to get more than 20 grams of yarn on here and uh, the more I spun the more I like spinning, the more I wanted to spin and just doing 20 grams at a time is not enough. So I, uh, I have been very keen to upgrade. I did earlier this year take a beginner spinning class at the Hand Weavers and Spinners Guild of Victoria. And I had been interested in it for a while before I signed up, but it is a beginner's class for spinning on a spinning wheel. So I delayed signing up because I was just on the drop spindle and I knew that I wasn't going to be getting a spinning wheel like a, a traditional, you know, big one with the big wheel that you make work with um, a foot pedal called a treadle. I knew that I wasn't going to be getting one of those for a few years and I wasn't really sure about investing in an e-spinner at that time either, but eventually I did sign up and I thought it was really great. It was so much fun spinning on an actual wheel. It's a lot faster than the drop spindle and you can do a lot more. Both things are probably pretty obvious to anyone who looks at the different tools, but it was just so much more thrilling to me. Um, to, to be able to produce yarn on that type of equipment. Now, one of the teachers did bring, did make an effort to bring a different wheel of her own to each class so that we could see different varieties out there. And um, for the most part, they were treadle wheels, but there was one day where she brought her electric eel wheel and I had a go of it and I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I had thought I would. For some reason, I thought that not having the action of treadling was going to make the experience less enjoyable or something like that. I don't know why. The things that go through your head when you have no idea about a subject. Anyway, I really enjoyed Having a go on that, I really appreciate that Sarah was bringing in her wheels for us to have a look at. And I had kind of been on the fence about getting myself an electric eel wheel e-spinner, but that that really did push me over the edge um, and I clearly decided to get one. This here is Bella. A... Uh, she is named after another horse in the Wheel of Time series. And this is, these are all of the things that came in the box. Before I actually go through all of those, I will just mention I did purchase a couple of other items. One of them is the Lazy Kate system here. And I'll just show it to you really quickly. I have already... Uh, taken out and assembled and been using one part of it because it has a really neat handy feature for um, for working with yarn. It is a lazy cake for plying 
and I wasn't originally going to get it but then I saw someone in a video saying that you can actually use it as a yarn butler so again it's 3d printed and I am just um, screwing in uh, I don't know what this is called the stick thing into the base there and the reason that I decided to get it is because it also comes with these stick things stick thing very technical term um, these stick things that you just sit on top like so and you can use it as a yarn butler which I already have had a go of let me just show you here um, this isn't the yarn that I was using on and it's very uh, tightly wound cake but if you put the yarn on there then you can just work from it like so. So that is the yarn butler there. Um, now that I've assembled it, I'll just keep it to the side. So it does also come with um, some tensioning bands in case you want to use it as a tension blazy kate. And let's see. It has bobbin stoppers. Hmm. The other thing that I purchased from them, which I was really excited to get, is their yarn counter. So this is a fairly new product of theirs. Um, I haven't looked into this at all and I won't be going through it today, but I just wanted to show you it is this handy device so that when you have spun your hand spun yarn you can put it through this and get um, an idea of how long a length of yarn you have spun. For the e-spinner itself this is the main body of the e-spinner. Um, it did it was already sitting on the base but I'll just take it off so this is the main thing here it has um, a tension knob, a Z and S button, which can also be used as a start and stop switch, a um, speed dial here, um, it's a pulley, um, at the back there's a plug, obviously there's one for power, but there's also one for the, the foot pedal, which is um, something that I'm really happy is included in this and the mode is just underneath very exciting and it this base is kind of just um a hollow cavity so that if you buy a battery pack for it the battery can sit neatly in there so you don't have to use it on the base but um i am going to I am going to today to see how it goes. So I just sit it over the screws and then pull it slightly so that it is um, more secure. There's the flyer here that has four sliding hooks on it. Pop that down. It has this little packet here which has the instruction manual a spare, um, is this, I think this is maybe called the brake band, which is used to tension the bobbin, um, a couple of drive bands, a couple of orifice hooks, a few spare, um, what are these called, bearings, whoopsies, um, a spring, an orifice reducer, um, some extra, again, some extra rubber things, I guess they're just extra spare parts. Mm, I guess I'll figure out. The other thing that's in here um, that I am super happy about is that they have these um, really good sturdy cards here that has um, a twist angle um, gauge. I guess you'd call it a gauge. It's got the width widths <laughs> Of yarn so that you can see what um, what weight of yarn you're spinning um, and then it's got an inch ruler and a centimeters ruler on it as well so really happy to have those they do have a spare one that does just have the S and the Z 
um, and they've called that a share card because it's like one that you can give away to a friend. I don't currently have anyone that I can share that with, so I am just going to hang on to it. It does also come with six bobbins. So they are 3D printed bobbins and they already have the bearings um, attached to the disc parts of them. So they come in two bags here. Oh, look at that, I'm a bit matching today. Purple, <laughs> blue, and white. <laughs> what else do we have here? So there is, I don't need that, power supply. <laughs> oh me power cord i knew when i ordered this that i would need um, an adapter because it is a us plug and i am in australia so i need an adapter for it but i forgot to bring that with me i'm just going to assemble as much as i can and then i'll have to um go get that <laughs> otherwise i can't spin out of this packet here i am going to take out one orifice hook they do have magnets on the main body for the orifice hook but i have seen that they no longer recommend using that because there was a user whose yarn caught on it um which is very dangerous because while everything is spinning around it could just go flying i'm gonna be bad and disregard that advice for now and i'm gonna stick the orifice hook there until um, i can find some better way to store it i do also need one drive band and I think for starters, I'm going to use it without the orifice reducer. So I will leave that in there. And I think that that is all I will need. Actually, no, I believe, let me just pull it out and put this aside so that I haven't got all of these things in the way. The brake band there does have a spring on it and I can feel that it's, um pretty highly tensioned and from what i understand the spare spring that comes in it like that's a lot easier to pull apart and my understanding is that this is better for finer yarns and this one is better for thicker yarns so i do actually want to um I, I do have a preference for spinning finer yarns, if I can, I have to say, if I can. So I am going to try to um, detach that. So I have just loosened the tension knob there and I am just now trying to take off the spring. It looks like it needs a bit of maneuvering to come out. Oh, there we go. I was just trying to push it out and all. I just had to pull it out and that's all it was. So that is just knotted on there. Actually, while I, while I haven't got it in, I'm just going to put them side by side. And I can see that the wires on the finer spring are a lot thinner. And the, the wires on the one that was attached for bulkier yarns is thicker. So they would be, that would be why they are stiffer. Whee! That can go a long way. And this one can't go as far. Let me... I'm actually not going to completely, like, remove the knot that aside again and then I can attach this finer spring whoopsies I am dropping everything okay it is all very kind of 
delicate and I'm just trying to um, do it so that um, I am not poking the wire through the plies of this um, of this cord. I'm finding that trickier. There we go. It probably would have been easier if I had just completely undone everything and then slipped um, the thread through it like you're threading a needle, but I didn't do that. So anyway, all right, that is now knotted on. And let me slip this back in. Yep, there we go. Okay, tighten that a little bit but I will probably have to adjust that again. The last thing that I want to attach is the foot switch that comes in it. It's a nice little compact one, which I like. It's nice looking. And I had it backwards, I forgot. So that's the plug there for the foot switch. So I'm gonna peel off the thing and I'm going to plug, oh, that is satisfying. All right. So that's that. I'm not going to completely um, undo this wire now because um, I, for starters, I'm probably just going to um, sit this on the table and use it as a hand switch. All right. I've got my switch there where I can reach it and now I just need to assemble the rest of it. All right, so the bobbin disc things, um, they do have two different sides. So these are different types of discs. One is flat on um, the outside of it and the other one has um, like a like a pulley disc type thing. So when you are putting this together, you do want to make sure um, that you have one of each of those. So you just screw in. I can't do things left-handed, so I'm just screwing that in. Okay. Now, I do want to say as well that I will be numbering my bobbins so that when I'm spinning, I can keep track of what I have spun onto each bobbin um, just to help with organization when I want to know what I'm working on so that I can take notes and what I want to apply together and all of that kind of thing. But I haven't decided how to do that yet because I don't necessarily want to take a Sharpie to these, um, but then it's also not the prettiest to put um, like a bit of masking tape on there to write on. What do I have to do now? I probably should have had another look at the instruction manual, but I believe... Do, 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 do. I'm going to do what I think. And then I'm going to double check the instruction manual to see that I've done it right. Okay, so I am just going to slip this brake band off the back. I am going to slide the bobbin onto the flyer. With the flat side towards me and the pulley bit is on the other side. I am going to slip the um, drive belt onto um, the, the first groove um, from the flyer. And let's see, if I hold this up, just loosen the tension a bit um, and slip the drive the brake band onto the back of the bobbin. I think that's what you're meant to do. Um, something doesn't feel right. What have I done? Just loosen that a bit. And does that just sit? Hmm, I think that just sits there like that. 
got the brake band on and I'll just tighten it again just so it has a just a little bit of give and then this drive band I just have to pull it down oh my goodness oh that has to stretch quite a bit come on there we go oh that is on a lot tighter than I would have expected okay that's set up we are ready to do wheel games I'm going to go away and get the um, power adapter so that we can actually do wheel games and double check um, that I've got this assembled correctly. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the adapter is in use. Everything is plugged into the wall. So I'm just going to switch it on. Green lights flashed, so it's on. Um, there is one thing that I had gotten wrong about the assembly. So in that packet with all of the odds and ends, there were these extra bearings. And I thought they were just being generous um, in case, you know, one of the bearings that are in the bobbin got scuffed up. Nope, that is not what they are for. I am going to loosen the uh, brake band, slip it off the pulley disc, and actually, I was wondering, I did find it odd that that was just going to be sit there because it is moving around. So actually, no, I'm going to lift that up a little bit. It doesn't go far because the um, tension on the drive band is so tight. But this little bearing needs to actually slip on the end. And then that sits in there. And now that is not going to wriggle around in there and it should turn a lot better. So now I can slip this um, brake band back on and tighten it a little bit. I think what I want to do is I'm going to tighten it so that the springs here just start to pull apart. So which way am I turning? Towards me. So they've just pulled apart a little bit and that's the tension that I'm going to try to start with. Um, a couple of other things that I'll just quickly note as well. Before I turned it on at the wall, I did make sure that the speed dial is set to zero. And the other thing, just a quick little tiny little note is that I am wearing um, an apron because I've seen other spinners wear aprons or recommend wearing aprons. I don't really need one today because I'm not, I'm very minimally going to be working with actual fiber um, to go through the setup of this wheel. But I think it just helps prevent fluff from getting all over you. I do eventually want to get myself or make myself a lap blanket. So what is recommended for the lap blankets is that you have one side that is dark and the other side that is light so that when you're working with different shades of fiber, um, you can use whichever side is going to give you the best contrast so that you can see what you're doing. All right, so we are going to do some wheel games now. So I'm not sure exactly how these will work because these are games that I'm sort of um, adapting from um, th they're wheel games for a treadle wheel I haven't seen although I haven't looked too hard I haven't seen that anyone has done these on an e-spinner but I really want to try because they're supposed to help you get to know your wheel so the first thing the first couple of games that I'm going to play don't require any yarn on the bobbin. So first of all, I'm going to set it to S-twist. Oh, it's already set to S-twist, so that's good. We'll start with that. And I am going to put it on to the slowest speed just to see what that looks like. Oh, that's exciting. That's spinning. That's pretty slow. I'm not sure I'll ever use that uh, pretty slow revolution. I mean, maybe for plying, but I don't know. 
obviously um, nothing is shaking around because <laughs> it's going so slow, so that's not an issue. Yep, so that is the slowest on the S. I'm going to try using my foot switch. Ha ha, stop straight away. Very nice. Um, and turn the speed dial down. I am now going to do it on the fastest speed for S. So let's turn this. Whoa! Okay, you can see that that is moving around there. I can feel the wind off it and it's traveling <laughs> on the table. So um, that is incredibly fast though. So I don't think I am ever actually going to be using that speed. Uh, wow, that was fast. That was really, really fast. If I ever do want to do it on that speed, I think I will have to screw it down properly onto something. But like I said, I do not see myself ever working that quickly. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, and for that one, I just uh, turned it off by turning the speed dial all the way down. So if I put it back up and just turn it down, that's another way to turn it off. Um, I do just want to see, so that was on number six. I do just want to see what the three speed looks like. That looks like a reasonable speed. And it's not... Um, vibrating and jumping around the table at that speed. I am now just curious to see what um, speed it will start doing that. So yeah, that is not moving on the table. I'm going to slowly turn it up to four. Okay, it's on four now and it is vibrating. It is moving very, very slowly on the table. So three seems to be a good speed. And um, if I need to work at faster speeds, I may need to secure it. But who knows if I will be needing those speeds anyway. Let's put it on back onto three. So the other way that you can stop it um, from spinning is to switch it from uh, S to Z, or Z to S, um, basically. So if I switch that, that slows it down. That stops it as well. So I'm going to put that back to zero. And this is now on Z. And we are going to look at the slowest speed on Z. So now turn that to one. All right. Fun times, let's put it on the fastest speed on Z. Ah. Interestingly, oh no, there it goes. I'm going to turn it down to three. That's three. That's nice. It didn't seem to be moving around on the table as much on the fastest speed for Z, which was interesting. Um, but you could hear it was still quite loud. It was vibrating a lot and yeah, moving around on the table still. So now I have it on three and again, it is not moving. It is not vibrating around and making a lot of noise. I'm going to slowly put it up to four and see if again, that is the point where it starts. So it is vibrating more now. It hasn't really slid um, from its original position on the base a lot. So that's interesting. It seems to be a bit more stable on Z twist um, than it is on S twist. I'm going to slowly crank it up to five. And I can really feel that that's vibrating now. So that's on five and it is, it's still not moving around the table. So that's interesting. I'm just going to put it back to six again and there it goes. It starts slowly moving. I, before I move on to the next game, I do just want to try something. I am going to take it off 
the base because like I said, it doesn't really need to be on the base to use it. And I want to see how it vibrates and moves while it's not on the base there. So I've taken that off. I am leaving it on Z and let's put it on to six. It's a lot. It was a lot louder and it moved around on the table a lot more without the bass there. Um, it did just occur to me as well that um, if there is a battery here providing weight, then that will probably help to stabilize it. Anyway, I'm going to put it back on since it was working better attached. Yep. Okie dokie. So we're still on Z. Dial is set to zero. The rest of the games all involve yarn. Yay! Um, I am just using some uh, this ball of yarn, whoopsies, that I had on the Lazy Cape. This is some old acrylic yarn that I kind of just, I don't make anything with it, obviously, because it's still yarn, but it, um, I kind of just keep it around for when I'm playing around with equipment. So um, once in a blue moon, when I take out my knitting machine, I sort of calibrate it in a way using this yarn so I'm just going to use it I'm going to just make sure that um, this hook the one the hook closest to me is as far down as possible as far down the arm as possible all right I'm just gonna get a really long piece how long did I make that not quite an arm span what did I do Arm to elbow, uh, fingertip to elbow, maybe. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Just gonna make a knot in one end so that I've got this giant loopy loop. And then I am going to do, 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 do. just touch that on, pull it up. Okay, that is still sliding around a bit, so I'm going to get um, one more. Whoops, this is hard. I'm going to pull one more strand of it at the back, so I have a loop there like that, and then I'm just going to pull the rest of it through. <clears throat> so just doubling up, pulling everything, making sure it's tight. Okay. All right, that's better. Whoopsies, it's bringing the bobbin with it when it comes around. So now I can put that through one hook, the front hook, get my orifice hook, stick it in. Whoopsies, pull it out. I have made that just kind of just long enough. This time I'm just going to stick to doing all of this on Z twist. You are, um, that I guess the recommendation for the games is to do this with in both directions as well, but I'm just going to do them on Z, um, because that is how I'm going to make most of my, um, original singles. I'm just looping the end of that yarn through the leader and what I'm going to do now is just go through all of the different speeds and I'm, for now I am um, leaving um, the, uh, the tension at, um, at the point that I had it where it had just pulled, it had just started opening up the little spring, so not a whole lot of tension. <clears throat> and I'm going to go through each of the speeds on the speed dial and just feed the yarn onto it so that I'm getting a feel for how it feels. Um, so it'll that will help me get a sense of what the drafting speeds um, should be and what the uptake is like um, on each of the different speeds just at this tension. All right, <laughs> let's give that a go. Start with one. So 
one is really really slow I'm just letting some twist um, get in there and then oh gosh that fades in so slowly so slowly I have to say the lazy Kate I feel like it needs to be clamped down because it keeps wanting to it keeps pulling so I'm I'm actually let's turn it off I think I'm gonna have to ditch the lazy Kate and figure out how to use that so I'm just gonna tuck this here and see how this works for me Woo, cool that's nice So it's not too bad. I am just, I'm drafting pretty slowly. But it's not too slow, it's not super uncomfortable, actually. So let's turn that off. And I'm just going to move my hook a little bit. Let's put it on to two. Ooh, that's quite a difference. And this feels like a pretty comfortable drafting speed, actually. I mean, I can still obviously go slower. can draft faster as well and not let that much twist in but that feels like a pretty good speed to be working at I'm gonna put it at three whoopsies and turn it on Ooh. oh forgot to move my hook So if I don't um, hold the yarn and just let it pull it in, <laughs> that's kind of fun. Anyway, that's not the point of this. And obviously I do feel like I'm having to draft quicker. off and move the hook again four oh that is just that's starting to want to pull it out of my hand and I have to draft pretty fast if if I just hold it there for let's feed that in so I can tell now that actually my take up needs to be higher at this speed because it isn't it isn't really pulling in as fast as it needs to so I'm not gonna concern myself with that just yet but let's turn it up And you can really tell that the uptake isn't, ooh, isn't as strong as it needs to be. I think that what happened, yeah, let's turn this off. What's going on? Yeah, building up too much twist. It's made this huge giant curly cue. So really, I can't work at the higher speeds without increasing my tension. <laughs> what a lovely mess I've made. Um, let's just put this at the lowest maybe two and just let it feed in three yeah it's not happy 
right now. There we go. I've gotten past all the curly bits and let's turn it down. Ooh, okay, so I'm not even going to try five and six until I have messed with the uptake. I'm going to start it on speed two and I'm going to increase, um, let's see, what will I do? I will do a... A quarter turn, yeah. That's a quarter turn speed uh, tension increase. And I will put this on two. And I should probably actually move my hook as well, but we'll just do this for a little bit. That feels good. That amount of tension on it does feel nice. Let's turn that down. We are on the next wheel game, which is messing with the tension of it. And I, I, I'm I, going to try this on, let's say, two and a half, because that seems like a good um, speed. I'm just going to move the hook a little bit and start filling up this valley that has appeared between where I've been winding the yarn on. So I'm leaving it at that quarter twist extra tension. It's on two and a half. And I'm just going to try that again. So that feels good. It's not pulling the yarn out of my hand. And it's giving me time to draft. So that's nice. If I, I'm going to try to do this on the fly. If I do another quarter inch, let's feed that on. It's still not pulling the yarn out of my hand, which is nice. It's, I can feel that it is a stronger take up, but it's not yanking the yarn out. Okay, so I am going to just increase to four and see if I can now. Yeah, that's working a lot better. It's um, letting me draft and it's pulling in enough. So that's really good. Let's stop it there. Move my hook down. And I'm going to see if I can keep it at that tension and go to five. It is starting to pull the yarn out of my hand a little bit. Yeah, it, it's pulling, but that's kind of better than um, than it not feeding on and creating all of these tangles and curly cues. So I am going to see if I can go up to six with this tension. Yeah, it's really pulling it in. But I do actually still have time to draft, so that's great. That's nice. Whoop, starting to get too many curlies. So, yep, you can see it's too much twist, not enough take up. So if I do want to work at that high speed, and let's just try it because I want to see what that's like. If I give that another quarter twist, I have lost track of how many quarter twists I have done, but let's see if um, that is enough. So for now, I'm just going to do a slower speed to feed some of that on. And actually, let's move the hook again. And, all right, so Let's try to go up to six. And interestingly, with some yarn on there, it doesn't, oh, there we go, it started vibrating. So I can, this is still actually workable. I do just have to draft quite quickly. So again, I don't see myself spinning at this speed anytime soon, but I can do it. 
I just have to have the tension right. Let's turn that down. I am going to um, decrease the tension all the way back down. Ooh, so much curl. Um, and increase it again to the point where it's just pulled um, on the spring a little bit. And I did think um, it, w it felt a lot better when there was a bit more tension than that. So now that I've got it to that point, I'm going to give it that quarter twist and work on it like that. That is actually all of the wheel games, I should say. So we had um, sp uh, having it going without any yarn at the slowest and the fastest speeds on both S and Z twists just to see what the unit itself is doing. And then I tried all of the speeds with yarn and just drafting it in to see how it would work. And I couldn't actually get up to the highest speeds because um, there wasn't enough uptake. So the next wheel game and the last wheel game was playing around with the tension and seeing how that goes. So I am now going to break this yarn, this old yarn, put it back to the side. And I do just have a small amount of fiber here. So this is some cheap um, fiber that I bought a long time ago. It's comb top and it's not actually meant for spinning. They were selling it as roving to make a chunky blanket, which I had done um, with a different color once I had tested this out, but I have over two kilos of this left. So I'm just kind of trying to spin it, I have a whole lot of this and I kind of just use it to try things out like you saw on um, Aldia here. So I am just going to try spinning some of it onto Bella. I am going to try drafting with it. It is not great quality like I have said but I'm going to try and let's see how I go. So I've got the tension. Um, it's on Z and let's get it up to two for now. So just gonna let it catch on. So I have to say that this yarn that I use, the acrylic white yarn that I use to play my wheel games, it was um, untwisting um, to, it, the, it was untwisting the ply of it when I was playing the wheel games. Um, so I, I am a very new spinner and I am still learning what I have to do. And I don't really know exactly all of the um, right ways to fix the problems that I encounter. So I think that this has a little bit too much twist in it or when I first started drafting this out, I could see that it was doing some little curly cues uh, before it was feeding onto the bobbin. So I just had to stop and laugh and smile because this is so much fun. I am really enjoying myself. I'm so excited to have my very own actual wheel. I feel like I'm going to cry. I'm so happy. Um, but you can see. I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. Um, but you can see I am not drafting fast enough. Maybe you can see. Let me, let me, uh, I didn't know which way to turn it off, but I'm not sure if you can see. Oh, hello. Lazy Kate to the rescue. All right, let's see if this works. So can you kind of see how these are starting to kink up? Hopefully I can zoom in close enough to show you that. Maybe I can pull some out and show you. But it's the yarn is starting to kink up before I put it into, um, before it gets fed into, um, onto the bobbin. So clearly I am not um, drafting fast enough or else I have the wheel at too high Oh, it broke. Ha ha. All right.
um, what was I saying? Let me finish that thought first. I had the wheel maybe at too high a speed for what I was drafting and I can see I've got curly cues up here as well. So I'm just going to pull some of this out, put it back on the hooks while I'm here. Um, let me move my hook just a little bit. Orifice hook, pull it through back on make sure nothing is sticking up so that nothing catches and so that's still at two and a half turn it back on and hang on a sec did I turn it off before by flipping this switch to S <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is why it came apart because it started spinning in the opposite direction so it undid the twist that I put in. Okay, I'm going to not use that switch to turn it off because I am just going to confuse myself. I'm either going to use <laughs> the speed dial or the foot switch. So let's try that again. Yes, and I can see on here that um, the twist that's in this... this um, bit of wool is an S twist. <laughs> All right, now I just have to wait. Um, I put that down to one so that I could make sure of which way I could see which way it was spinning. I'm just going to put it back up to two and a half and let some twist get back in there and um, attach some new fiber. <laughs> oh, mistakes are fun. Okay, so I do have to say that um, although this yarn really isn't the best quality, it is a lot easier to draft it on a spinning wheel than it was on the spindle because I have both of my hands for drafting. There isn't um, one that's sort of holding everything up and trying to keep everything in balance and I, I am able to um, spin, I am able to draft pretty finely. I am still inconsistent, of course, as a new spinner. Uh, there are bits that are thicker than other bits. Um, there are bits that are thicker, there are bits that are thinner, but I am, um, I am able to draft pretty thin. Very first impressions of this wheel are, I love it, um, if I want to work at the really fast at the really fast speeds above three, then I will have to. I think I will have to mount it onto something. I am quite comfortable spinning at the three or lower speed, um, and I am. I am really. I'm really enjoying this. It is. I'm making yarn. <laughs> Oh, spinning is just so wonderful. Um, yeah, it's it's brilliant. Thank you to Dreaming Robots for making this this wonderful wheel. It has you know it's got all the features that you need. It's got you know the extra bits and pieces to swap things out for what you want to do. Um, I I really appreciate having the different springs to um, help tension for the different types of yarns that you may want to spin. I primarily see myself spinning in order to knit with it because like I said I am a knitter. Um, that is my one true love. <laughs> so that's primarily what I'm going to be doing on this. So I'm not sure that I will ever switch it to the heavier spring again but you never know. I'll also, um, I did say that I haven't put the orifice reducer on here, which you would use for spinning finer yarns. I can see when I'm looking um, where it's feeding into the orifice that the yarn is like going back and forth. Um, so I it would be good to see if that orifice reducer makes much of a difference. Right now I don't feel like it's impacting 
me greatly. I can feel it wibbling. So actually, you know what, let's try it now. I'm going to put that orifice reducer in. So it's just slipped in there. And then I can take my yarn, put the hook in, hook it, hook the thread, pull it out. So the orifice reducer has just made the hole here a lot smaller so that that yarn isn't um, waving around so much. Let's reattach the yarn by letting the fibres catch on. And, I mean, it's definitely not moving around as much, but again, I don't know that that's really impacting um, the quality that I'm spinning at or how easy it is to spin. So I probably will leave it on there um, because it is a little bit smoother, but yeah, I, I mean, that's really, that's really handy to have. So I am really, um, I'm really impressed with this, this wheel, my first wheel. Before I sign off, I will just do one more thing. Let's stop this. If I pull out a bit, I'm just butterflying a bit onto my fingers here, and I'm going to get my hook so that I can do a ply back test. So I've just let that go and looked at what it naturally spins to, and that's pretty nice. I will try one thing, um, one, one more very last thing before I sign off. I'm going to try long draw. So this isn't, this is something that I don't have a lot of experience with, but I have quite enjoyed doing it when I do it. So I'm just going to put the speed a bit slower onto two and let's give it a try. So I am going to do a supported long draw because like I said, it's not something that I have experience with, but look at that, it's doing it, it's working. Let's feed that on. So the thing for me with long draw is um, that I don't feel like I can control um, the thickness. And it always has some thick and thin spots because I can't, I'm, because I'm not drafting out each little bit of the fiber. I don't have as much control over the diameter of it, but I'm so pleased that that's working. I just want to see if I can do it with my other hand. And I'm not actually, I don't actually feel like I need to do it supported. Oops, that's starting to pull out. I feel like I do need a little bit more uptake to do it, but it is working. It's gotten finer. Maybe it's just the speed at which I draw back. This was so much fun. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope that um, you've enjoyed watching me stuff around with my brand new electric eel wheel six, my Bella. I love her. I think she's great. I'm so excited to do so much spinning with her. So much spinning. I'm just really excited to get really stuck into it. I can see on the bobbin here um, although I'm not sure if you can, let me try to bring it up close. But you can you can see the difference. Um, how this bit of grey is a lot fluffier than this bit of grey. So that was my short draw, and that was my long draw. So you can see as well um, that this is more consistent than this. But I love it all. I love it. I love it. I think it's wonderful. I love that the bobbins are multicolored as well. I think that's really fun. 
I hope you've enjoyed going through the wheel games and getting to know Bella with me. If you have, then I hope that you give me a thumbs up. Um, if you, if, if I have made you interested in this wheel at all, I do have an affiliate link below for purchasing your own. So if you purchase through my link, I will get a small commission on that. Um, but whether or not you do want to buy it, I hope that you have, um, learn something from watching me fumble through and and I hope that it has piqued your interest um, in this wheel or in spinning or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, please, please give me that thumbs up. Comment, comment below your thoughts on um, what I have fumbled through today, what you think I could uh, do better, what you would like to see in my spinning journey. Um, and yeah, if, if you have any questions or want to see me try anything, let me know in the comments below. And that is all that I have for you. Thank you so much for joining me on this ride. I don't know how to sign off. I guess I'll just say, fairly well. <laughs>